In appreciation for God, I want to show you one more quality that makes Jehovah unlike any other God I've heard of. I'm Zach. This is The Average Christian, simply learning what it means to have a relationship with God. That's what this project is about and how to live that out in practical, everyday terms. I want to take you to John 17, 20 and 21 here. There's a few scriptures for this, so if you're following along, I'll read them for you. They're all out of the ESV. If you're following along or taking notes, then you can write these down. Another thing about Jehovah that makes him different from any other God that I've heard of. Look, there may be some out there. I'm not saying I have any great knowledge of all these other religions and so-called gods and so forth, but I don't know of another one where the God lives in and among his servants. Usually gods in that real general sense are way out away from the people and way above and far removed. And his subjects are just trying to, or his or her subjects are just trying to do whatever to appease that God and keep them off their backs. And we have a God that not only lives with us, but actually in us, we live in him. And it's really kind of like describing a marriage in the terms that God uses in, uh, Let's see, what is it, Ephesians chapter, no, excuse me, back in Genesis, in Genesis chapter 2, where they uh, leave father and mother and become one flesh. Well, not literally, but they we have such a close relationship, he defines it like that. Well, Jesus actually prays in John 17, 20 through 21. He prays before he goes off to be crucified, betrayed first and then crucified. He says the following in verses 20 through 21. He's actually praying for me and you here. I do not ask for these only, his disciples particularly, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. So we are actually invited to be in God, and you'll hear the the phrase in Christ and see that so much through the Bible, in the Spirit, in God the Father. And then you'll hear the reverse, that God is in us, the Father is in us, Christ is in us, the Spirit is in us, and so forth. And I hear a lot of people, and I used to do this as well, talk about things like the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and so forth. And there's lots of confusion. There are lots of different uh, opinions and understandings of verses and so forth. And then I I looked, and I I used to pay a lot of attention to it, and I backed up and I realized that it, it really doesn't matter how in what way there, it just denotes a close relationship. We are in him. He is in us. However you find that and and come to that in the Bible. But just like a marriage, like I mentioned, we have become one in first John three and verse 24. Here's some verses for you. Whoever keeps the commandments abides in God and God in him, that close relationship. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. Ephesians 2, 21 and 22, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. And he's talking about the church. This is exactly what Jesus was praying for, what was on his mind before he went to be betrayed. And he prayed for you and me. Romans 8, 9 through 11, you, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit If in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, see this is talking about the Spirit being in us, talking about Christ being in us. Uh, If Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Jehovah is not far away. Now that should be very comforting for those of us who are Christians, for those that we're inviting into the body of Christ to to obey the gospel, to to be saved. You have this option as well and God wants all of us to be close to him like this, but he is right here. And we've talked about numerous verses that talk about how we should behave and how we should think and the comfort level we should have knowing that God is nearby. James 4 and verse 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Philippians 4, 4 and 5, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness, your calmness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is right here. That's what makes Jehovah so special, at least one of the things, one of the many qualities that makes him so special. And I don't know of another God like this who wants to be with, by, next to, in, and have us in him and describe such a close relationship. 
want to thank you for being here. For those of you on YouTube, if you have not already done so, please click the subscribe button and support our channel. If you want to see what we released last time, it's in this corner. What YouTube recommends is over here. For our podcast listeners, thank you as well. Please subscribe, rate, and review. It lets us get the word out even more. And for everybody, if you know this will help somebody else, share it, please.